Thunder! 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 Thundercat! Lionel from Thundercats Origin Explored The 80s cartoon Thundercats, which was created by Tobin Wolf and written by Leonard Starr, was renowned for several things. Its exciting pilot episode that saw the destruction of a planet, its horde of villains, and its setting on an Earth much different from our own. However, one of the best things about the show was its leading character, Lionel. Lionel was a Thundarian noble, and as such, a humanoid cat who was destined to be the Lord of the Thundercats. However, he found himself on a new planet far away from his home planet of Thundera. Thankfully, his friends, the other Thundercats and Snuff were there with him to guide him throughout his journey. With his Sword of Omens, which is the deus ex machina of the show, Lionel would embark upon several adventures in his quest against evil and for the well-being of others. In this video, we will get into how Lionel left his planet and how he became the Lord of the Thundercats. We will also go over his role in the Thundercats reboot from 2011 and his crazy abilities. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Thunder! Thunder! Lionel's Backstory Explored Lionel was born as a noble on the planet Thundera. His father, Claudus, was the ruler of the planet and the lord of the Thundercats. However, all of that was turned on the head in the very first episode itself. The show begins with Thundera being on the brink of destruction. Lionel is only 12 years of age, and as per the rituals go, he is supposed to be the next Lord of the Thundercats. He escapes the planet in Thundera's royal flagship alongside other Thundarian nobles, such as Panthro, Tigra, Chitara, Wily Kit, Wily Cat, and most importantly, his mentor, Jaga. Their journey to a new safe planet is not a guaranteed success. However, since the royal flagship is soon attacked by the mutants from planet Plundar, a planet that was an enemy of Thundera's, their goal? To get their hands on the Eye of Thundera, a mystical gem that was the source of the power of the Thundercats. It was embedded in the hilt of the Sword of Omens, which was a weapon that would generally be wielded by the Lord of the Thundercats. Since Lionel is only 12 years old, he is no lord, at least not yet. He does not even have the strength to lift the sword. The mutants infiltrate the royal flagship and begin to destroy the fleet. But before they can get their hands on the Sword of Omens and the Eye of Thundera, the weapons come alive in the hands of Lionel. An insignia or a cat emblem is projected from the Eye of Thundera and the mutants realize that this fight is not one that they can win anymore. And so they run. With the ship ransacked and crippled, the Thundercats have to alter their course and find a different planet that can support life. Around this time, Panthro finds a blue planet that seems to be suitable for living. It is the third planet from the sun and is soon dubbed Third Earth. However, it is still light years away and the ship, which normally runs on autopilot, needs to be manned now because of the sorry condition of its navigation system, thanks to the mutants. Lionel's mentor, Jaga, decides to man the pilot to Third Earth, with the rest of the cats remain suspended in pods that prevent them from aging. Well, kind of. Lionel is against this because he wants Jaga to survive, but it is revealed that the pods do not stop aging completely. They just slow it down by a ridiculous amount. And yet, Jaga was already too old so even the pod could not prevent his death. So he decides to die while helping them out instead. The cats enter their sleep chambers and Jaga pilots the royal flagship to Third Earth. Towards the end of his lifeline, he programs the ship to wake up the Thundercats after they arrive at their new home planet. He also sets it to autopilot once he cannot go on any longer and takes his final breath. The royal flagship crash lands on Third Earth, but they are not the only ones there. The mutants from Plundar are waiting there for a second try against the Thundercats. We see Lionel once again, but seems like his sleep chamber was a bit faulty, since he is now a fully grown humanoid lion. 
He now has a luscious mane and a strong build. As a big cat, Lionel has slit pupils and very chiseled features, alongside the fact that he is 6 feet and 9 inches tall. He is also canonically quite handsome and designed to be perfectly proportioned. Meanwhile, the other cats seem to have barely aged from their time in suspended animation. Lionel is now strong enough to pick up the Sword of Omens and fights off the mutants once again. However, things aren't as fine as they seem to be for Lionel since he has only aged physically. He still has the mind of a 12-year-old and an overwhelming lack of experience. This means that the other Thundercats must prepare him thoroughly so that one day he can be worthy enough to be the Lord of the Thundercats. In the course of the next few episodes, Lionel goes on several adventures in Third Earth as he fights off the mutants and Mumra with the other Thundercats. He gradually gains more life experience and leadership skills. He is also quite sensitive and empathic as he fights the villains because he stands against their terrorization of Third Earth. He is honorable, just, brave and has a strong moral compass. He also becomes a master of wielding the Sword of Omens, a sword that can only be used for good and never for evil, which is what makes Mumra's quest for it pointless. But it is not until his 20th birthday that Lionel has to go through the grueling test that will determine whether he will be the next Lord of the Thundercats or not. During the story arc of the Anointment Trials, which is spread across five episodes, Lionel goes against the members of the Thundercats and Mumra. To become the Lord, he must come out on top, and he must do it all without his Sword of Omens and his Claw Shield. Snarf notifies Lionel about the trial, and initially he is against taking part in it. After all, this is Third Earth and not Thundera. He is annoyed by the fact that he was never told about it. But Snarf tells him that as the future Lord of the Thundercats, Lionel has to be ready to go against anything at all, especially the unexpected. So now, not only does he have to fight his friends and outdo them in their areas of expertise, which seems to be impossible for him, he also has to overcome several other obstacles, all without his weapons. On the first day of the trial, that is the trial of strength, he must prove to be stronger than Panthro, the strongest Thundercat. Snarf asks him to eat enough since a long day awaits him, and after a major dilemma, Lionel gears up for the first trial of strength. He is given a map that he must follow to get to Panthro, but his way is full of obstacles as he has to cross a path full of stinky, thorny roses, go across a river of acid, fight against the Great Void, and prevent himself from being sucked into a vortex. With his might and wits, he overcomes them all, until he finally finds Panthro waiting for him while overlooking a town. The two Thundercats fight one another when the unexpected happens. An earthquake causes the ground to split with Lionel standing in between. He tries to hold on but eventually slips. Panthro is aware that he cannot help Lionel as it goes against the code of Thundera. However, this problem is an unprecedented natural disaster and not a part of the ritual, so he decides to lend his hand to Lionel. But Lionel decides not to take it. After a great struggle, he manages not to fall off the newly created cliff and climbs up. Soon, a boulder comes crashing down. But being a huge boulder, it rolling down the slope creates the risk of a landslide that can wipe out the nearby town. Panthro notices it first and uses his might to stop the boulder. However, he can only delay the disaster as the weight of the boulder turns out to be too much for him. Soon, Lionel comes to his aid and Panthro collapses from exhaustion. Interestingly, Lionel has enough strength to avert the crisis, proving that he is in fact stronger than Panthro. Panthro acknowledges his strength being superior to his and gives Lionel his insignia, which testifies that he has cleared the first test. On the second day, Lionel has to race Chitara, Thundera's fastest runner. Named after the land's fastest animal, that is the cheetah, Chitara possesses super speed. Taking these factors into consideration, it is hard to understand how Lionel can win. Add the fact that the mutants keep causing trouble throughout the trial to leave the Thundercats leaderless, and you can only imagine the stuff Lionel has to go through. In fact, the interference of the mutants kind of make it a lot harder than the trials the other Thundercats of the past had to go through, at least on a physical level. 
With Lionel and Chitara having to race, Lionel knows that the conventional method will not work against Chitara's super speed, and so he opts for the shorter but more dangerous route. During this time, he is attacked by several plant-like and animal-like creatures. He also comes across people who try to help him, but he refuses to take their help since he is undergoing the trial. Of course, he cannot tell them why he can't accept their help. Meanwhile, Chitara gets attacked by the mutants. She dodges them and runs as fast as she can. However, her speed is no more as fast as it was when she had begun her sprint. She soon comes face to face with Lionel once again. And together, they decide to race the traditional way against each other on parallel tracks with none of the tricks and shortcuts. And so they do. Chitara is a lot faster than Lionel, and the other Thundercats monitor the race from the cat's lair. They are mostly confident in Chitara winning the race, and Snuff is super anxious. However, Lionel gradually seems to catch up. He is unwilling to give up no matter how fast Chitara is, and in the end, he wins the race. He is suspicious about his victory and accuses Chitara of letting him win because it does not make any sense. However, Chitara tells him that she would never cheat as she strictly adheres to Thundera's code. On top of that, her top speed only lasts for two miles, after which she is just as fast as any other Thundercat. And in this race, the distance was too much for her. Lionel's will allowed him to win in the long run. The third day of the trial, which is the trial of cunning, is the one where Lionel has to go against the cunning Thunder Kittens, Wily Kit and Wily Cat. With Lionel proving his strength and speed, it is time to put his wits to the test. The Thunder Kittens and Lionel will go against each other in the maze of infinity, the home of the Under Earthmen, in what seems to be a series of caves that ran under the terrain of Third Earth. Naturally, the mutants were all geared up to ruin it for the Thundercats, which meant more than the regular obstacles that you would normally face in such a trial. Lino goes against the trickery of the Thunder Kittens, who try their best to ruin Lino's sense of direction by confusing him. He also has to deal with things like the obstacles within the maze itself, and once again, almost falling off a cliff. During one important moment, he comes across the Under Earthmen, a group of beings who were revered for their knowledge. But they were mistreated above the ground and soon resorted to living under it. The lack of exposure to light caused them to lose their eyesight, which meant that they could not read their texts anymore. When they found Lionel, they tried to get him to read those texts out to them. Ultimately, Lionel ended up getting on their good side. He continued with his trial and went against the traps that Wily Kit and Wily Cat laid out. In one instance, he even fought a fake dinosaur. Because he could get to another one of their traps, the lives of the Thunder Kittens almost got compromised. They were on the verge of falling off a cliff. This seems to be happening a lot throughout the trials, and Lionel heard their screams. He soon rushed to their aid and tried to save them. When he struggled to do so, the Under Earthmen came to give him a hand, making Lionel realize that one can never have too many friends. Ultimately, he left the Maze of Infinity after tying the Thunder Kittens to a rock. Them being tied up prevented them from leaving the maze before Lionel and proved that Lionel had outdone them when it came to cunning. Finally, he cleared the third round as well and earned the new cat insignias to prove his competence. For his fourth trial, Lionel would go against Tigra and his power to confuse the mind with illusions. The trial of mind power would test Lionel's resilience against illusions and his ability to see through them. Before the trial, Lionel meditates to put his mind at ease. He then meets Tigra in Hook Mountain. Meanwhile, the mutants await their turn to attack, which makes things confusing in the sense that now Lionel has to distinguish between real problems and fake problems. Lionel is hit by a missing Tigra, hiding his tracks with his illusions, fake blizzards, lots of fake imagery, and real fights against the mutants. After overcoming all these obstacles, he has to go through the worst one. Tigra comes from the respectable Tiger Clan of Thundera, and as such, possesses astonishing mental powers. With these, he procures an illusion where Lionel cannot even hold his gears and try to look past them. Lionel feels himself falling into nothingness until he is brought back to planet Thundera. 
But this is not just a regular day at Thundera. It is the day of the Exodus, the day of the planet's destruction, and Tigra brings Lionel's greatest fear to him as he has to witness his home being blown into bits. But once again, Lionel is able to evade this illusion and defeat Tigra. Finally, he defeats the last Thundercat and earns another insignia. This brings his trials against his allies to an end. What awaits him is something a lot worse, and this time it is against an enemy who seeks nothing more than his destruction. On the final day, which is the trial of evil, Lino has to fight Mumra, the undead sorcerer who is his greatest enemy. Lionel infiltrates Mumra's Black Pyramid. He has to fight several demons on the way, but emerges on top. Since Mumra is the withered corpse of a mummy in his natural form, he is bound to have a sarcophagus which acts as the source of his power. As a sorcerer, Mumra also has a cauldron. When he goes against Mumra, he does so without his weapons. Without the Sword of Omens and the Claw Shield, Lionel has to use his fists and wits against the ancient evil. He soon locates the sarcophagus and throws it into Mumra's cauldron. This defeats the sorcerer for the very first time and proves that Lionel is 100% worthy of being the Lord of the Thundercats. Not only does this bring the series of trials to an end, it also gives rise to the new Lord who is soon crowned in a trial held in August. Every inhabitant of Third Earth attends the ceremony. Too bad Mumra is not dead yet. After all, he is the undead sorcerer. We see him again in the film Thundercats Ho, where we learn about another Thundarian trio who have been able to survive the destruction of planet Thundera. Pumaira, lynx -O, and Bengali. Now, as the Lord of the Thundercats, the fate of the new Thundarians is up to Lionel, who still has to fight several enemies such as the mutants and Mumra. He even communicated with the spirit of Jaga during a battle. The three new Thundarians were ultimately made honorary Thundercats by Lionel. Lionel later went against another group of enemies called the Lunatax. Things hit rock bottom for him when his Sword of Omens was destroyed. But Bengali's expertise as a blacksmith resulted in Lionel getting a new Sword of Omens. His home planet had also reconstructed itself and was now known as New Thundera. This Thundera was smaller than the original, but it was now up to Lionel and the Thundercats to overlook both Third Earth and New Thundera. Ultimately, he did succeed at bringing peace to Third Earth. Lionel's journey continues in the Wildstorm comics as he still has to fight Mamra, despite having trained a lot. He will end up aging because of Mumra's spell, but will also help bring peace to New Thundera. Father vs. Son The comic Thundercats origin, heroes and villains highlights the individual stories of certain characters from Thundercats. It takes us back to their lives before the destruction of Thundera, sometimes going further back in time as we get a glimpse into the lives of Lionel's ancestors. After giving the readers insight into the origins of Mumra and Chitara, the comic chooses Claudus as its main character. Here we see how Lionel's father Claudus became the Lord of the Thundercats. It also shows us how different Lionel's father had it. In a way, the mental pressure was a lot worse for him. But in Lionel's defense, King Claudus was not a cub stuck in an adult body. Jaga lays down the final test of the anointment trials for King Claudus, who seems to be very sure of his victory, having done well so far. Jaga calls him out on his arrogance and tells him how his final trial is bound to be quite psychologically taxing for him. In the story, Thundera is on the brink of a galactic war and the conditions of that war play a part in Claudus' trial. But his enemy is not an outsider, not a mutant from Plundar or any other enemy planet. The contender is someone from Planet Thundera's Royal Council itself. This man is presented as a corrupt general who is leading Thundera headfirst into a war for his personal benefit. He is also the man behind the death of Claudus' grandfather. The man is none other than Claudus' father and Lionel's grandfather. Claudus is shocked to hear who his new and final enemy is, but faces him head on. 
His father is waiting for him and tells him about his plan to attack the moon dwellers and conquer their territory. And he needs Claudius to approve it as he will soon become the lord of the Thundercats. Claudius realizes how high the stakes are and he has to choose Thundera over family. But he does not say anything out loud, not until his father talks about how weak his grandfather was for not wanting to embark upon galactic conquest and asserting their position as the dominant species. Claudius calls his father out for his twisted mentality and realizes why he himself was chosen to be the next lord after his grandfather. He even expresses his disappointment in having to prove it. And so they fight. But Claudius is way better than his megalomaniac father and soon disarms him. However, his father hits a new low when he tries to kill his own son. But Claudius is too good a fighter for him. Knowing how terrifying his father is to the future of Thundera, he impales his heart with his sword. He later ponders over his actions and believes himself to be the same as his father, since he ended up killing him. But Jaga reminds him that Claudius did not do this for a selfish reason. He did this for the well-being and the future of Thundera, which is what he should do as the Lord of the Thundercats. <laughs> His story in the 2011 Thundercats reboot of the original. Thundercats got a reboot in 2011. In terms of characters, not much was changed. However, this animated series gave us a new premise. Lionel was the son of King Claudius. He has never met his mother as she died shortly after giving birth to him. He also had an adoptive brother, Tigra who his father seemed to like more, mainly because Lionel did not share the same beliefs as the king. But that did not change the fact that he was chosen by the Sword of Omens at a very young age. Lionel and King Claudius were at odds due to Lionel's hopes and fascination with technology. During one instance, Lionel visited the slums of his home planet to obtain technological artifacts. Around that time, he was exposed to how terribly the animals in the slums were treated. Just like his character from the original cartoon, Lionel was very empathic towards those who were being oppressed and wanted to fight for them. Around this time, he was noticed by Chitara, who had a different origin here and did not start off as a Thundarian noble. Initially, Chitara was surprised to see the prince in the slums. After they interacted, Lionel opened up to her soon enough and expressed his desire for technology to become one with the people. Chitara saw that Lionel was unique and began to support his aspirations. But somewhere down the line, Lionel developed feelings for her while Chitara loved his adoptive brother, Tigra, who loved her back. On the same day, Lionel underwent the ceremony of the Rite of Passage. The Sword of Omens successfully determined that he would be a great king. Lionel also got a futuristic vision that he failed to understand. Lionel's empathy later came to bite him back when he encounters a pair of captured lizards. The lizards harbored great hatred towards the Thundarians and Lionel learned that this was due to the mistreatment they had faced in the hands of the Thundarians. He even convinced his father to release them and went against a mob of angered Thundarians in their defense. However, the lizards soon attack Thundera with their vast technology and weaponry. Lionel is horrified, especially when he learns that one of his mentors, Groon, had also joined the lizards. Meanwhile, his other mentor, Panthro, has been captured and is being held as a hostage. Panthro is soon released by King Claudius, but he kills the king. Soon, he reveals himself to be Mumra, the ruler of the race of lizards. Mumra brings planet Thundera to its destruction. Lionel is then captured alongside his brother Tigra, Chitara and Jaga. He also realizes that the vision he failed to understand earlier was that of Thundera's destruction. Once freed, the Thundercats and Jaga run with the Sword of Omens and they head to find the Book of Omens, a relic from the treasure of Thundera that contained all the knowledge and secrets about the Thundercats. But just like the original series, they must leave a dying Jaga behind once again. They later pick up the Thunder Kittens Wily Kit and Wily Cat, bringing back the original crew together almost. The real Panthro joined them later and helped them find the Book of Omens. Jaga was also revealed to be alive as his soul had been trapped in a lamp by Mumra. 
But once again, he sacrifices himself, this time for good, and to save the Thundercats against Mumra. With the Book of Omens, Lionel entered it with Jaga acting as his spirit guide. Here, he met his ancestor, the very first Lord of the Thundercats, Leo, who had previously overthrown Mumra and freed the animals who were being oppressed. He also learned of the existence of four power stones, with the Eye of Thundera being one of them, which must be united to take down Mumra. But that would not be enough. Lino would need to unite all the animals in this fight against the evil undead sorcerer. Lino and the Thundercats continued with their journey. He trained with the warrior known as Drifter and polished his swordsmanship. He also mastered the Eye of Thundera sight beyond sight. He soon found the Spirit Stone and defeated the lizards at a village they were terrorizing. But the following events caused major love life problems for the prince, which we will get into while discussing his relationship dynamics with some of the other characters. He also found Tigra's lost tiger clan, allowing his adoptive brother to reunite with his real father. However, as a series of complicated events transpired, Tigra stayed back with Lionel and the Thundercats. They went on to find Pumaira, who happened to be a cat refugee in this story. Pumaira was not free, however, as she was constantly forced to fight in an arena known as the Pit. Lionel learned that attaining victory in a hundred fights would allegedly give her freedom, but Lionel did not believe it. He later tried to break Pumaira out, but ended up getting captured in the process. He soon found himself in the situation where he had to fight Pumaira in the Pit, and he had to defeat her to be free once again all while the other Thundercats were prohibited from helping him. In the pit, Pumaira let out her frustration against him as she believed that Lionel abandoned the Thundarians during the fall of Thundera, which is why she was sold and became a slave. During the fight, Lionel refused to go against Pumaira as he now had to prove his loyalty towards the Thundarians, especially with Pumaira's realistic allegations hanging over his head. Lionel got beaten up relentlessly by Pumaira while trying to win her trust and ultimately succeeded at doing so thanks to his incredible loyalty and resilience. She soon fortified the match, but the result was shocking for both of them. With no clear victor, both Lionel and Pumaira were sentenced to death. The cries of the others and Lionel's loyalty resulted in a change of opinions, and both Lionel and Pumaira were freed. Pumaira soon joined Lionel's cause and headed to Mount Plundar with them to find the other cats who had been enslaved. The Thundercats raided Mount Plundar to free the cats. Around this time, Pumaira got a hunch that Lionel was into Chitara, who had feelings for Tigra instead. She subtly flirted with him as she asked him to move on and focus on someone else. Lionel kind of got the hint and was visibly flustered by the idea of it. In this arc, Chitara and Tigra also managed to find the Sword of Plundar, which becomes a big advantage for them. However, Mumra could sense the sword and so he sent his lizards to get it from the Thundercats. Pumaira and Lionel took over to guard the sword of Plundar against the enemy, but Pumaira ended up getting captured. Mumra then blackmailed Lionel with Pumaira's life online to get the sword back. As Pumaira was sent plummeting from above, Lionel chose her over the sword. Unfortunately, the show got cancelled after the first season. But within one season, it did an incredible job at adding a twist to a pre-existing story and retelling it. In the 2011 series, Lionel's interpersonal relationships remain the same as its original counterpart, but the dynamics are different. His relationships with Chitara and Tigra are a particularly big highlight in the subplots of the story. Starting with his adoptive brother Tigra, Lionel grew up having a rivalry with him. Often, the Thundarians and King Claudius would show their partiality towards Tigra, who was also jealous of Lionel since the latter was the rightful heir to the crown. Tigra eventually got romantically involved with Chitara, which Lionel did not know about. Things got complicated as he developed feelings for Chitara, who only saw him in a platonic manner, if not like a brother. He mistook his support for his ideals and her good luck cheek kiss as something romantic. Later, Lionel heard a prophecy, one where Tigra would betray him. It came true when he saw his brother kissing Chitara. It left him devastated. Thundercats! 
Oh! What makes Lionel so powerful? The anointment trials did more than enough to prove Lionel's powers and abilities, as he had to outdo the best in the game to stay on top of the pyramid, or maybe, in a lion's case, on top of the food chain. His physical strength equals that of Panthros, if not exceeds it. As a big cat himself, he is quite agile. This makes us wonder why falling off a cliff was such a problem for him, since he would just land on his feet, wouldn't he? His endurance is incredible as well, as he managed to defeat Chitara in a race with that very ability. In a shorter race, he wouldn't have fared so well, but in the long run, pun intended, he gets the top spot. In the other trials, Lino emerged victorious with the power of his wits. Conventionally, macho protagonists like Lino are often made to be more on the dumber side. No brains and all bronze. Lino strays out of that convention as he is shown to be quite clever and intelligent whenever necessary. In fact, he is the type who avoids violence instead of running headfirst into it. But that does not mean that he is not brave enough. In fact, he is the bravest character in the show, especially when it comes to saving his friends. He happens to have an incredibly heightened sense of smell and sight, alongside his extraordinary durability and reflexes, thanks to his cat-like heritage. In one episode, he was also able to survive the vacuum of space alongside Snarf and Panthro. When it comes to abilities, Lionel excels at hand-to-hand -hand combat and as a sword fighter, slashing through his obstacles at the blink of an eye. With the Sword of Omens and the Eye of Thundera, he is not someone you want to mess with. In fact, the sword alone can have its own power segment. As the deus ex machina of the plot, the sword can practically do anything the plot requires it to do. So apart from the regular slashes, sight from the eye of Thundera, casting of force fields and energy blasts, the sword of omens can also act as a boomerang and control the weather. Lionel often flies on it and attacks the villains with the Thundercats insignia flying out of the sword. Other than that, his claw shield acts as a very versatile weapon, often sharpening Lionel's punches and allowing him access to grappling hooks whenever necessary. For someone who seems to fall off a cliff every now and then, grappling hooks are a great thing to have. Lionel can look across the planet or wherever he wants with the visions from the Eye of Thundera. Mastering sight beyond sight also gave him the ability to make sound judgment and better strategies. Power alone is rigid, but if you can bend with the wind, you'll never break! Other interesting facts that you should know about Lionel. Lionel happens to have another strange power, but this is not exclusive to Lionel alone. It is something that is possessed by the Lord of the Thundercats in general. The ability to control all cats. Be it panthers, tigers, or even house cats, Lionel can control them all. King Claudus, Leo, and Jaga the Wise could probably perform this feat as well. That's not the only interesting thing about Lionel's life. During several instances, he has been part of crossovers with characters from other universes. Starting with the Man of Steel himself, Lionel fought Superman in a DC and Thundercat crossover. In this story, Mumra managed to locate another Eye of Thundera in Metropolis, prompting him to come to Superman's world. The Thundercats followed suit and found themselves at odds with Superman. This is because the cats and the humans spoke in different tongues, so the miscommunication initially started a feud between the two. Thankfully, it was cleared soon enough and they joined hands to take down Mumra and the mutants. In a 2016 miniseries, Lionel fought He-Man when Mumra tried to steal He-Man's sword because he believed it to be powerful enough to crush Lionel and his Sword of Omens. Mumra also allied himself with Skeletor for this mission, even though they hated each other. The undead sorcerer would eventually kill He-Man, although temporarily, because he would soon resurrect him as an enemy to Lionel. Thanks to the Sword of Omens, Lionel was ultimately able to snap He-Man out of Mumra's mind control. They soon teamed up with one another to fight Mumra. The greatest thing about Lionel is not his strength or his sword. It is his heart, his empathy and love towards others, his willingness to make the world a better place, and his desire to do what is just makes him an inspirational hero for the kids. And that is something cartoons often try to do. With Lionel, they nail it out of the park.
And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks, everyone. Sword of Omens. Give me sight beyond sight.